Watch out for the hole. What Welcome to the Portable Hole Podcast. I'm Ryan George, and I'm here with my good friends, Cynic and Justin. How are you guys doing? Long day. Yeah. It's been a long day. <laughs> long day, yeah. How about you, Cynic? Is it today your day off? You do look very road-worn, uh, yeah. Justin. I am road-worn today. As if you're, today. you know, at the end of your rope. <laughs> are, you, are you you're still in Nashville, right? I am, yeah. Okay, well, all right, working cool. What, what, what what, what what oh working on the house is that what's doing lots of renovations and stuff i was i had to i had to go to like home depot three times today like picking okay. up lots of like rocks and stones we're doing like landscaping and tiles it's just Ooh. it's like it, it makes me think of um you know the movie old school and it's like yeah. we have a really busy day we're going to home depot and you know, before he becomes <laughs> yeah. frank the tank Oh, it's a, it's a nice segue. Like I was going to say, the, the perils of being a homeowner, of which uh, Cynic, uh, you, you've got some, some, some news, right? Yeah, I'm back on the market. Uh, we, uh, we landed something. We couldn't be happier. Um, we're closing awesome. soon, probably moving soon. So any able-bodied people out there that want to lift furniture uh, for beer and pizza, I'm absolutely down to pay. Uh, one slice and beer per person. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's nice. And so you're, you're moving now. Are you, is your commute going to be worse or better? Slightly better, but different. Um, okay. I'll be bussing rather than riding on the train. Okay. Well, uh, you know, it's interesting. Are, are you a bus person or a train person? Well, I've always been a train person because the bus has never been an option, but yeah. uh, you know, I'll learn to love it because yeah. it's right outside the door. Oh yeah, that, that, I mean that's great. I've, I, you know, it's weird. I've always liked tra- I've always liked buses, but I find that a lot of people they can't stand them. Um, and and it's it's not as consistent, especially in New York. You know, you can get on a bus across town, and it'll take you like several hours. To, no, not several hours, but it could take you an hour to get three blocks. So oh, we did that in San Francisco. That. Yeah, yeah, we uh, we went out to see uh, uh, the name of the street escapes me, but it's the the windy one in all the pictures. And, okay. Uh, yeah. Yeah, we decided to take the bus, and it took literally hours to get across yeah. San Francisco. Okay, if yeah. we would have took an Uber and uh, spent a little bit extra money, twenty minutes. Yeah, I, I mean, you could have walked that too. I feel like, um, and, I mean, it's, it's a, I feel like San Francisco is pretty. It's a pretty walkable city outside of the fact that it's so it's so hilly. Well, we decided to stay over by the stadium, so we're a little away from uh, everything. Okay, got it. We we're okay. about two and a half miles away from Fisherman's Wharf. Okay, got it. Okay, yeah, yeah no, that, and that's a bit of a trek. I love that area, though. Oh, I do too. Yeah. So you so, and that brings us to another thing um, I wasn't even expecting to talk about. So you're where are you in your stadium tour? Because I know you're 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 you have a goal of visiting every baseball stadium, right? Well, I'm down to seven, and uh, I had at least three that I was going to mark off this year, but it yeah. sounds like that's got to be on hold due to the purchase of the house. Ah, okay, so we're yeah, probably going to yeah. take a, a year off from travel and maybe do a couple weekend trips. Um, yeah. I, I was actually going to bring that up to you. Uh, we're thinking of maybe doing Boston, maybe Baltimore. Yeah. So you know, oh yeah, or, or, or I'm sorry, Pittsburgh and, and Boston. So. Yeah. Oh, that definitely be, could be fun. Yeah, yeah. No, the, uh, it's like I'd like to convince um, Anna um, uh, to to maybe let's not. I mean, I, as much as I love travel, like to take a year and like let's maybe not do so much so we can save a little bit. And, yeah, and maybe you know not throw all my money away in rent as as we currently are. But um, but it seems as if uh, travel takes the priority. So Ryan, I heard you uh, you made a movie. Okay, so yes, yeah, so, so um, Cynic, you were you were not around the last couple of weeks. So there was the uh, the Smod Castle challenge, uh, which was uh, Kevin Smith did a uh, a, a challenge, uh, which is basically you have to create a movie in four minutes and thirty, or create a movie over the course of a weekend, and it would be four minutes and thirty seconds. And basically, that Saturday they would give you a line, a uh, prop, and a character. And so the character is Rick Darris from from Clerks. Um, the prop was a hockey stick and there was a line from, I think it was chasing Amy. Um, and shockingly, um, like Anna, my brother and I, and then Justin wrote music. Um, we somehow were able to put something together in a weekend. It was actually pretty cool. It, we didn't make the finals. I was really hoping to make the finals just to see it on a big screen, but, uh, we still came up with something pretty cool. And I just want to make a couple small edits to the, like the, the sound, which is probably part of why we didn't make it. Uh, although uh, yeah. who knows? Cause it was that you know crazy. What 
I, it's funny. I, I, uh, I sent it to, to my friend who does a lot of production and he said yeah. that that was actually the weakest element was the, was the audio, the yeah. quality, which I mean, given the time, it's like, look, if, if we had yeah. time, it, first off, the recording of it was, you know, you probably didn't have the facilities to record proper audio and then yeah. we didn't mix it at all. It was just, we had no time. It was just, it is what it is. Yeah, so, yeah exactly. Throw it so. together. Yeah, but Justin wrote some awesome music for it. And so we're going to post it on the YouTube uh, at some point soon, um, just because it was a fun little like four minute. And, I mean, it was just one of those like, like it's kind the of story was really good. Did story it. Was really you good. know, the fact that I actually did that in such a short time was pretty cool Um, and put it together and that like everybody came through. And yeah, it was like the one thing the knock was like the audio Um, I wish I could have redone in the beginning because I feel like that's what really dinged us because otherwise the story was really good. It was shot well. Was There's some good visuals, even yeah, all things considered. Uh, but yeah. It was funny. So yeah, yeah, they're definitely gonna. Um, I, I, I'm excited for you to see it, uh, Cynic. It's, it, it's actually really fun. Um, anyway, so let's see. So on to I guess uh, what we've been watching. So uh, Cynic, what have you been watching recently? Was that to me? I'm sorry. I was... Yeah. Oh yeah. Sorry, Cynic. Yeah. Yeah. What have oh, you watching? Okay. Um, actually, we circled back around as we have been doing because uh, of lack of options. Although we do have some great stuff coming up that I can't wait to talk about. Yeah. Um, but we went back to Deadwood. Uh, HBO. It's three seasons strong. Uh, I like the first two a lot better than the third. And we uh, we we knocked out three seasons in the movie and a little under two weeks. And uh, still one of the strongest products that HBO has ever put out. Really? Yeah. yeah I, I like one of those first are... season. First, I thought the first season was tremendous. Very tightly scripted. Like you had to pay attention, right? Second season was good up until halfway. Unless I'm confusing my seasons, like, because it's been well, so long. But I remember the, it got to a point where it was hard to watch, and I just, I couldn't, I couldn't keep up with Well, they anymore. introduced the, the character of George Hirsch, who became the big bad for the seasons and kind of brought the rest of the town together. And yeah, it did change the tone of the show. As much as I enjoyed seeing them all work together, you know, having uh, an overlord and having them, uh, you know, elsewhere and you have to bow down to somebody kind of hurt the overall quality of the show. Uh, in the third season left off at a really, really weird build up weird. and nothing yeah. happened. And they, they revisited it with a movie, I believe, 10 years later. And it was nice and they did a good job. It wasn't too on the nose with the flashbacks and callbacks and such. Um, but it was the same thing. Like we really didn't get a conclusion, but it was a nice goodbye to the show. You know, I mean, it's, it's got a, it, seem, I mean, it seems like it has a fantastic cast. I remember at the time, um, wanting to move forward with it, but I just never got around to, to watching it. So I'm excited. Um, I think it's one of those that I, it's like on my list of like, there's like, you know, I have this, the list of shows that I, you know, I need to get catch up with at some point. And uh, it's definitely high on that list. And, and now that you've brought it up again, hopefully, you know, it's something I'll get, I'll get to soon. Um, any, have you watched anything else or has that been taking up most of your time outside of what we'll be talking about today? Well, I mean, um, there's been... Uh, a couple things here here and there, but uh, not anything as religiously as we've been watching Deadwood. Uh, you know, with baseball season kicking in full gear, that, that takes a good portion of my time up. So I've mm -hmm. been checking out spring training games and, and trying to see who's going to do what this year. So, you know, sports have come to the forefront, and it seems like every Saturday night there's a uh, UFC event, which is, yeah. you know, something to look forward to. Yeah. So speaking of UFC, we didn't, we didn't, um, well, UFC adjacent, at least, uh, you weren't here when we talked about it last week. What are your thoughts on the, the Mike Tyson, Jake Paul fight? <laughs> I really hope he has enough gas in the tank to put a serious hurting on that kid because I'm just over him fighting smaller, older, retired fighters yeah. or fighting uh, boxers that, uh, you know, come from MMA where yeah. we, we all know that they don't, they don't have great stand up. I'm just over it. I don't know who's paying to see this. I don't know where all this money is coming from, but I kind of wish uh, and hope for uh, just a stunning knockout, like an yeah. old school Tyson has one more punch left in him knockout. And, uh, you know, maybe Jake Paul <laughs> relieves himself all over the mat. <laughs> that would be great. There have been some cool videos of Tyson, like, you know, doing pads. But again, it's like anybody can look. I mean, not, you know, who knows? What, yeah, but he looks look better than fight. most. I'll give yeah. him that. Oh, That's absolutely. Chip. Chael Sonnen, who I absolutely, uh, you know, love, pointed out that in all of those videos, Tyson's not sweating. So that means that you're seeing the first 30 exactly. to 45 seconds of that workout. Yeah. And which is what I was, I talked about when we were talking about before is I think, you know, obviously he's Tyson. He's got a, you know, he's powerful. He's got skill. Even at his age, he can obviously move. But the question is, does he have the gas tank 
and the power to take him out early. Because if he doesn't, I think that's where it's going to be a problem. It's like he's a 57 I don't think anybody man. has hit as hard as Tyson can. I don't think Jake Paul has fought anybody with the boxing acumen that that Tyson has. So yeah. I, I'm that's one of the few instances where I'll watch it. I'm yeah. not saying I'm going to pay for it, but I'll figure out well, a way to watch it's, it. It's Netflix. So we don't have, I mean, that's the beauty of it. Like we've already right. paid for it. Right. Like that's the, I, I think that's the brilliant part on Netflix's part as like we've talked about with them, um, you know, buying raw is, you know, they're getting into live sports and you know, what better way to, to, to do that than to, you know, put on a fight like this. It's, it's a complete circus, but you know, who's not going to watch it if you have Netflix, right. And who's not exactly. going to watch it live. Um, yeah, so yeah, it's one of those things uh, that I think we will all, you know, tune into and I think we'll oh, yeah, talk about it in. one way or another. Uh, so Justin, have you, have you been watching anything or you've been too busy? Not too much, just what house? we're going to talk about today. Yeah. I am, right. I'm, I'm getting pseudo hyped for uh baseball season as a Mets fan. It's, it's, it's a mid year where they're like, not going to be, they're going to be a decent team. They're not going to be a great team. They don't have the pitching for it. Uh, I don't believe they do at least, I guess you never know, but. They've got a lot of good young players and that's the, and, um, you know, money bags is taking the approach of let's try to have a, uh, you know, build some longevity here. It's like yeah. maybe the, the massive spending spree, which is also adjacent to what you're, what you're about to mention, mm. um, will, will occur next year. Cause you know, it's, you know, for Cohen, it's all basically monopoly money. He can throw it around and, you know, with, with what he has, it's, nothing is going to dent him too much. And it's well, like, they went it, all in last year and spent a lot of money on two pitchers that didn't work out. And they even told one of the pitchers on the way out the door, listen, we're not going to be competitive for next year um, because they need, they ate most of those contracts to get rid of them, but they did get some good pieces back. And you guys just added JD Martinez, which is another quality of bat. So it's quite possible that you can make some noise. The problem they're going to have, Justin, to be honest with you, is that division is just so damn tough. It's tough. It's tough. Yeah. The Braves are tough and, but you know, it's, things are weird like anything can happen like we're not expecting and, and I, it's it's nice going into a season being able to say you know what i'm just going to enjoy watching this i'm not there's you know I, we're not pressured we're not expecting to win so let's just see some of the young players what's his name it's really heartbreaking that what's his name tore his acl because that he was so good um I, I keep forgetting his name you know the mets stud you know their their major prospect but um yeah, so that's upsetting. oh Mercurio or player. something like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah he, he was, yeah, he was so good. He was he did great as a rookie, and then they just, of course, he tears his ACL. But um, it'll it'll be fun. You know, it's uh, I've kind of got into watching games uh, uh, like everything on, you know, uh, flipping through them because I I couldn't get the um the games when I was in Nashville, <clears> so I got the MLB subscription to watch the Mets, and I would just like flip through it and you know basically watch a a forty minute game because it's hard to sit through a, a three hour baseball game i know they've they i think actually what they've done to shorten the games has really helped them. oh so it's, it's much more much more tolerable than having to i'll tell you to watch it live is a lot games. better but yeah, to I see bet. it or to, uh, to watch it in, uh, on tv is great it's made it a lot better because yeah. i gotta get up in the morning so a seven o'clock game is getting over at 10 which never happened before i know um, it's, it's just but if you better. go live like you've really got to plan your trips to the bathroom or the concession stand or you're gonna miss two innings easy the game moves that quick in person. Really? Yeah, that's wow. good. So now, I guess quickly, who are your picks for the for this season? Let's say, uh, who are your picks to make it to the World Series? Well, that's leading into another news story you have, but uh, the Dodgers <laughs> look amazing. The uh, Braves look amazing. Over in the American League, it, it still looks like it's the Astros. Okay. Justin? You think the Astros, not the, not, uh, not the Rangers? You don't think they'll be back? Um, I think so. I just, uh, I, I never count Houston out. I think the yeah, Rangers were more of a, a Cinderella team. I, they, they're a quality team, but I just don't think they've got the if, the consistent horses that the, the maybe Astros Maybe not, do. but if, uh, if DeGrom comes back healthy and if he comes back good to form, he, you know. See, your big, inner Mets fan if. is showing there. If DeGrom, if DeGrom, if. if DeGrom. It's always an if. It's always an if, oh, always. right? Well, with DeGrom, it's a big if. It's a capital yeah. if. It's like you go for you can be either the best pitcher or just go a whole you know not throw a single pitch in a season, like it's just yeah. You know what I'm when he's on the mound, <laughs> he's the best there is, but he's when? not on the mound a lot. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> All right. Well, you guys have alluded to our first news story, so let me just get through what I've watched recently, and then we can talk about um we'll talk about one of the, the big news story for the day. Um, so I got I got I guess with the Oscars, I got into a, trying to catch up on some of the Oscar movies. So I watched 
uh, Poor Things and American Fiction. Have you guys seen either of those movies? No, I have not. Okay. Uh, so both both are good. So Poor Things, um, it, it, it's it's a weird movie. Um, it, Emma Stone's in it. Um, is it, it, it? It's like a Frankenstein ish type of monster, basically, where like a child's brain has been put into an adult's body. Um, and uh, and it's it, it is kind of weird because it is very hypersexualized. Like it, it is, it, it's it's like she's naked and having sex throughout the entire movie, and you keep going back to well you know how old is she in like how old is the brain in her it's like what a few years it's it's just kind of just weird um it's it's a beautifully shot movie like it, it's it's just so weird visuals um really good cast and very strange she won an oscar for it and i largely think she deserved the oscar she was really good in it um but definitely a strange movie if you're, if you're up for something like that and then um i watched american fiction which was which was very good um it's jeffrey wright he played he's a he's a writer he's a, like a black author who is struggling and does not want to kind of put out books that um are focused on like the black struggle. He almost sees himself as like he in several times he says he's colorblind and doesn't want to, he kind of wants to just be a writer, not a black author. And then ends up kind of doing it as a joke and becoming very successful because of it. And hijinks ensue. And it's, it's a really, really well done movie. And I think Jeffrey Wright was also nominated for an Oscar and, uh, and he didn't win, but was, was an excellent performance and, and definitely worth watching. Uh, it's just one of those actors, Ryan, that makes everything he's in better. Yeah. Like the season that he was on Boardwalk Empire was probably the best season of Boardwalk Empire. Yeah. You know, that had some to do with Bobby Cavalli as well, but you know, it, Jeffrey Wright really brought he's it great. that season. When he, uh, you know, he's great in Westworld. He was yeah. even great as when, when they, I remember them announcing him as Commissioner Gordon. It's like, perfect. Yeah. <laughs> and he was great. Like, even, even in that role, I like, love him as Gordon. He's like, he's, he's such an awesome actor. So I'm mean, glad that he's getting you know very well deserved recognition um as he's just he's awesome so anyway let's get to our so the big news story is um over the last couple of days this just crazy story with with shohei otani the possibly the greatest baseball player we have ever seen um he you know signs with the dodgers for a massive contract i think it's like in the 700 million dollar range um we find out that his interpreter Ipe Missouri, I'm probably butchering the name, but basically is, um, was be, is the interpreter is being accused of what they term massive theft. And his lawyer said that he basically used Otani's money to place bets with an illegal bookie in California. And um, he claims that Otani paid off his $4.5 million in debt. However, the Otani camp denies it and are accusing him of theft. And this is an ever-changing th- story, so I may not have the facts right anymore but um but it's it just insane uh Cindy, what are your thoughts on it well i mean it would really suck if he's tied into this whole yeah. thing and they find out first off yeah. who's still using an illegal bookie you can't walk three I feet know. without That's... seeing a fucking advertisement <laughs> for online gambling I, everywhere i know yeah. i was just but he's the golden boy of baseball right now yeah. he's the face of baseball without a doubt um despite what some of the naysayers say that oh he's speaks very little English. He can't be the face of baseball. Yeah. He is. He's the no. modern, he's the modern day Babe Ruth. And, uh, it would be terrible that if uh, he gets caught up in something and even worse for the Dodgers, cause they're on the hook for 700 million. Yeah. So I, I hope, um, I really hope for the sport and for him as a player, as a person that he's, you know, just in with the wrong people. And that yeah. he did maybe try to help out, which seems like a cover up because Pete Rose did some similar things where he placed bets through other people and then tried to uh, accuse them of, of making those bets. Yeah. So right away, everybody's grouping him up with Pete Rose before there's a shred of evidence. Yeah. So, well, I'm, I, I'm, maybe you guys know what were, what were the bets on? Well, they're saying everything but baseball. Okay. It was like, up all the NBA, NFL, everything, else. Sorry, everything but I, baseball. I but we don't know. You yeah. know, they're illegal bookies. So how are we supposed to know where the bets went? Yeah. Um, my big thing is liable on the internet, on things like Facebook and Instagram. Yes. If you come out and say something like that without proper, you know, due diligence or without knowing the facts, there really should be 
if I was famous, I would hire people to sue people that say stuff. You can keep the money, whatever you get from them, you know, hire a law firm and just sue random fucking nobodies on the internet that run their mouth yeah. like that because they say the yeah. worst things about people. Yeah. This guy's, a, uh, you know, he's addicted to gambling. This guy's addicted to sex. This guy's been on Epstein Island. People need to get sued for that. You can't just make statements like that. Yeah, no, it's... Uh, Sorry about that. There's a difference, I think there's a difference between freedom of speech and freedom from consequence. Exactly. Yeah. Right. So yeah. I, it's so the, the, what what gave, what gave me pause is the thought of uh, all right. So there's there's two schools. There's like why would Otani need to be placing bets, right? Like the is 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 what first comes to mind. Right. This guy is, is super wealthy. Like he could you know he 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 could go if he re, if he likes ga if gambling is his thing, then he could go to a casino anywhere in the world and they would give him the royal treatment and he could gamble to his heart's content he could charter a private jet take him give him you know uh, you know every you know uh, the, the, the top treatment for any casino person and he could gamble his, to his you know his heart's content so why would he be involved in that and then there comes the second thought of people do dumb things it's like why did you know and i saw an interesting documentary on it um like why did michael vick for instance do dog fighting like a, a guy who is the top player, one of the top players in the NFL, making a, a ton of money and super good looking, like was on his way to Hollywood. Like, why would he do that? Like, just like, what's the thought process behind it? And people do, and, and they're not, and there's many examples. People do dumb things. People do dumb things. So that was how much of it. And, and then, of course, there's a thought, all right, maybe he was just helping a friend out. He was just like, look, you're, you're in trouble. I'm just going to, to, to bail you out. I have the money. I can just spend it. And let's just be done with it. So that was what came to mind. Like, why would he gamble when he could have the best gambling treatment? But then people do people do dumb things, you know, yeah. with you know that defy logic. Yeah. So that's well, and I thought. think that's the most likely scenarios. I think you hit the nail right on the head with that. I I, I think it's going to be he tried to clean up somebody else's mess, and he well, he'll that, be one of the long line of famous people that have just gotten bed with the wrong person. Yeah. Yeah. You, you've got to think, I mean, you know, somebody, a generational talent um, is somebody who, who's got to have, I would imagine as the right people around him would not be making like that, those poor choices. Now we've seen that in the past, but you just do have to think that he was trying to help a friend and that he's not like got this massive gambling problem. Um, my question though is, Let's say it is really his problem. I'm not a conspiracy theorist, but I feel like the MLB might do everything they in their power to cover this, cover it up with the amount of money that is invested in him. It's like I, I there aren't many situations where I'd I'd really believe that they would go to that extent. But like with somebody like this, uh, you almost feel like they would do whatever they had to do to cover it up, toss yeah. the guy under the bus, whatever they got to do, because you know, he's the golden child. And uh, again, he's like, a, a, you know, a, a talent, you know, in baseball that we've never seen before, or, you know, at least haven't seen since Babe Ruth. Uh, so it's like they're going to do what they can to make sure that he's he's OK. I would agree yeah, with that. Just, it it, it may already be in the process. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, so we may never know sure. the, the, the whole truth. There definitely, there's but, there, oh, there's definitely some damage control, right? That's you know they're they're on it. So the question is, all right. So we've seen there's been plenty of other athletes that have had gambling problems. Uh, Cecil Fielder comes to mind, right? He yeah. actually a very tragic story. He basically lost all his money gambling, right? Um, but he went and he gambled legally in a casino. So I, I'm just the only thing is gambling, and, and you know, see, it's like what you said. Why would you gamble illegally when you can? gamble legally like yeah if you want to lose all your money you can do it legally and people wouldn't bat an eye they would say oh this doesn't look good like would, would mlb go to that length to really hide up a legal problem like i don't think so i i think if you wanted to gamble legally it would be no a non-issue i don't know what the collective bargaining agreement says but i would imagine that they're allowed to make wagers on other sports yeah, but you can... so the only reason you would hide it if they are allowed is that you were betting on baseball yeah, that's no, that's fair. Right. That makes sense. I mean, what are you? But it's just like, what are you thinking? Yeah, I mean, if yeah. That's, if, if, that, if it was, which I just yeah, hard I to gotta believe, believe it's but... not. It's got. I gotta believe it's just friend got a gambling issue and. But talk about blowing the uh, the gig yeah. of a lifetime. 
Yeah. You do nothing. You interpret. That's all you do. Like, you know a language, you know another language, and you just go back. And Otani, if we're being fair, speaks English. Yeah. He does. I've heard him. You know, so he may not have all the nuances of it, but he's probably about 60, 70% of the way there. So how much interpreting is this guy really doing? And he's probably pulling down a couple hundred thousand dollars no, I, a year i think i read somewhere between three and five hundred thousand dollars that's year. insane like, how do you buy that fucking gig that up? <laughs> or like or like what that, yeah the, that doesn't make sense i mean it, it's just well that's that, that that doesn't help the argument that it was it was that <laughs> and maybe he's just being the fall guy why would someone just people do dumb things though but on, on any side of the coin people do dumb things yeah exactly so i mean i you know it'll i i, I hope for the sake of like you know MLB and and, and Otani that that I it don't. is really I the hope interpreter. For the, sake of the Dodgers getting creamed that <laughs> a big scandal comes out yeah. and yeah, know, but no, I mean, like I think I, nah, I like as somebody who's not as big a baseball fan as I once was, right? Like once was a massive baseball fan. I feel like he's he's an incredibly important <laughs> figure for the for the sport. It's more than just a dot. Like, right, if he was playing for any, if he was playing for the Red Sox, you know, as you know, as a, a Yankees fan, like it's still he's he's so important i think to the sport yeah. that um that you gotta hope that he uh yeah. that that he it's not him because that would be a crushing blow i mean that would do a lot of damage not just to the dodgers damage, but to MLG, yeah. mlb in general if 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 this scandal involves him actually betting right like that that would yeah. be a serious issue and I, that's why his mo is such that he's very much Derek jeter-esque with the way he conducts himself yeah. both yeah. on the field and off the field like he just recently got married and he released a statement. Hey, I got married. I'm not saying who it is. I'm not releasing pictures. I just letting everybody know I got married. I'm not buying that he uh, yeah. he has some sort of hidden problem. Yeah. So we'll, we'll, I'm sure again it'll come out one way or another. But uh, but hopefully hopefully it is just the interpreter. Do you think Do you who, think that who, there's who any chance that uh, he's gay and he he got married to a dude and and that's you know. Well, he did like, refer to her as a Japanese woman, so I I, I don't know. <laughs> but if you're um. <laughs> If you're the interpreter, you know somebody's writing that guy's a, ch- a, a huge check that he's getting on the back end for being the fall guy. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah. No, almost, he, most definitely. He'll have tons of money to gamble away then. Yeah. <laughs> Seriously. <laughs> All right. So next news story was a funny story that I, I saw a uh, couple last week. So uh, that um, so uh, <laughs> did you guys watch the Power Rangers growing, like Power Rangers at all? Um. So... Um... Not only did I not watch the Power Rangers, <laughs> but I had a visceral dislike of them for yeah. a couple reasons. One, because it was so corny, but I didn't get at the time that it was like that on purpose, right? Mm-hmm. Or was it like that on purpose? I actually still don't even know to this day. And I didn't like the fact that they usurped uh, the Ninja Turtles, which was one of my, which was my favorite show as a kid. Um, even though I had outgrown it and I didn't care. So I just, I didn't like it. I did like the music though. It did kind of take the world by storm. We were like, it's like right in that time, like we were in high school. So like we were maybe a little old for it, but like, I remember watching like the first season of it. Um, But anyway, the, the story is that the original Red Ranger, Austin St. John, whose career peaked <laughs> at that point, um, yeah. started a clothing line. And uh, I'll read, I'll read this quote. <laughs> you wrote, so I have some ranger oriented clothes uh, and then I'm building a warrior line where I'll go back in history from pre-Greek days and Justin uh, I would, or we'll sit again Justin you can start to figure out where this is going as far back as I can I'm going to have famous quotes from warriors of all ilks including the terrible ones Hitler was you know a demon on steroids but he had some pretty good one liners so everybody from the great ones to the infamous and terrible ones <laughs> <laughs> like how how dumb is that to have a clothing line and include Hitler quotes? Imagine goes, showing I guess up on a, uh, to, to meet your girlfriend's family with this uh, Hitler quote on your shirt. <laughs> Sadly, there will probably be a lot of people that will will end up buying. This, maybe, well, uh, look, maybe we think but, it's dumb, but maybe it's not. Like maybe that's a strategy. It's like, look, there's no way I can succeed just doing a regular clothing line, so I'm just <laughs> going to appeal to you know the, you know those people that would appreciate this i mean look, <laughs> I trump made a living off of it so uh, recently uh, yeah but I, uh, 
And he's having a hard time making that bond. Yeah. I don't know how much of a living he's made. Now he is. Is. I know, right? Not that's that a, good. A, a story I, could, I thought about padding was like, oh, let's stay away from oh, politics for a day. Yeah. But yeah, that's what you're really, it seems like he's going to have a rough time. I did see a good meme. Uh, it was like, the, the name's Bond. Can't pay the bond. So. <laughs> I've seen a lot of Taylor Swift like, hey, she can write a four hundred million dollar check. <laughs> yeah, seriously. <laughs> oh yeah, it's, uh, the, uh, maybe we'll talk about it next week, guys, because I think it's only getting like we're still at the point where like they're starting to see stuff, and we'll see what kind of what what ensues in the next couple of weeks. But maybe something that we kind of have to talk about. But yeah, um, if if they start taking letters off of Trump Tower in New York City, we gotta go. Yeah. We got to go over there. <laughs> yeah, yeah, right. <laughs> that, yeah, it's, that, it's cr- just crazy. Um, so, yeah, no, I just, I just thought it was like just such a weird thing. Like, we, you have, why would you start a clothing? Like, oh, yeah, start a clothing line. But why would you do that? And then why would you a- announce that or advertise it and say it almost like you're proud of it? Like, it, like I thought we're past that point. You know, there's no, there's, it's, not Ryan, like it's, like a- it, it, it's not a, it's not a question of right or wrong. It's yeah. just a question of how much attention can I bring to myself? Fair enough. Yeah. It's the same. Like, <laughs> 99% of everything on Twitter is bullshit. It's just yeah. inflammatory. It's fake. It's made up. It's yeah. if people don't even believe what they say. They just put it out there to see if they can get a reaction. Yeah, that's true. No, you're absolutely right. Um, and then another, well, so speaking of Twitter, we'll go to move over to TikTok, where uh, last week Congress voted to ban TikTok if they don't, uh, if they don't sell to a, I don't know if it's a U.S. based organization or just a company not based in China, but basically um, TikTok is owned by ByteDance, which um, is a Chinese business. Uh, I know, I know they're like, as far as who owns the company, I know part of, you know, it, their investors involve a variety of people and groups, but the argument is that it, you know, it's, it's spearheaded or largely controlled by the Chinese government and that they're potentially spying on people through the app. And while TikTok has safeguards in place, which includes that I think um, all the data is routed through Oracle or through or, or the data wall. Data is um, gone through a firewall through Oracle, whatever. I, I'm sure I butchered the wording on that, but um, basically they claim there is protections there and that everything in the U.S. is routed there so that it, it does not go directly to China. Um, Congress thinks otherwise, and uh, the argument against it obviously is that it's a free speech issue and um, that it's it's not fair to to target tiktok so you guys have you guys been following the story at all i have a little bit yeah and what are you what are your what's your position sitting my position is as such that you're worried about tiktok which i believe tiktok is a huge problem and i believe that should have been banned a long time ago because it's a chinese app not allowed in china so that tells you what they feel about tiktok but we allow them to make our TVs and our phones and our security systems and our processors and, and tons Bingo. of things that they could build kill switches in. But we're worried about a, a social media app. We continue Bingo. to, uh, 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 we allow them to make medicine. We allow them to make uh, uh, supplies for, uh, for our, our weapons and our aircraft. And come on, dude, it, you know, it, you, this is where you, the hill you're going to die on. You know, we've already given them the keys to our kingdom, but we're worried that girls are shaking their ass on uh, TikTok. It's 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 ridiculous. And if we're not going to look at the whole of the behavior, then we can't look at the bits and pieces that we choose that are problematic. TikTok is a problem because the as much as they want to say that the oh we don't give away information. If China wants information, they they've got to give it to them. It, they've got i i watched uh the guy and he did a very good job i can't remember his name but I, he sat before the senate and he, you know ultimately they couldn't nail him down on being a part of the communist party and he wasn't even from china but they've got to answer oh, yeah. to the parent company and the parent company's got to answer to the the republic of china uh, justin you're, what do you you sound like you agree so i think yeah i, I completely agree it's like yeah, I, I mean, how many um, potential data breaches could happen with in anything that we that we do? It's like <laughs> our our information is out there. It's just it, it's ridiculous. It's like yeah, that's the hill you're going to die on. I do like there. I I would bet there are some backdoor ulterior motives going on with Congress, as there always is. It's like. You know, the the at, at least on, on the face of it, the one thing Democrats and Republicans agree on is making backdoor deals so that they all get wealthy. 
right? So um, who knows what's going on and, and what the ulterior motives are. I also think that if there is an honest aspect to it, which I never believe with anything involving either uh, powerful politicians or powerful corporations, right? Or what, you know, it's never fair. It's never uh, transparent. But there's an element of um, influence there too, because now with the, you know, with just how good these algorithms are for showing you stuff that you want, there is a. Um, and look, this could be said, and it's a big discussion really about any social media is how much influence can it have? How much can it? I don't like to use the term brainwashing because I, I'm of the belief that um, people who get brainwashed are people who want to get brainwashed um, for the most part, you know, given, you know, with, with a little leeway there for the most part. So how much influence can uh, a, a, a social media app have over people, right? How much can it feed based on what you've watched, give you, I mean, a feed lot. you misinformation, political stuff? Right, um, a lot. Just like and get you, you know, get you, get you crazy. You know, like we've seen stuff like this. There's been people, like there's been people who have who have basically watched too much um, Fox News and who've gone crazy and killed people. Like it's happened, right? There are, but it's happened know, through social media happened. as well. And in third world countries, well, rumors like, get started all the time, yeah. and people get hunted down for them. Yeah. And, and mean, before QAnon was forced into you know the dark corners of the web, like 4chan, it grew and thrived on Twitter and, and Facebook. Yeah. You know these things are dangerous, and yeah, they really so need to be looked at. And I too. think the larger thing is like, yeah, uh, you know, there, it, there, I'm sure there is an issue with spying, um, but you know, potentially, and I'm sure there's back doors for China to get through whatever you know. Um, safeguards are in place, but um, I think you know AOC um, kind of made you know the best point on this is is like there there should be a set of regulations that should apply to all social media companies because at the end of the day, like you said, Justin, like they're 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 all problematic. They all have issues with um with the amount with data and with privacy and with influence, and it's kind of one of those. It's it's like where we you know, I feel like we're with AI right now where we we lost the internet. We, you know where we we did or social media where we didn't regulate it enough, and then it became too powerful and too influential, and now you can't like put the toothpaste back in the tube, and, you know, so to speak, in that yeah. situation. And I think you know the issue is find a way to properly regulate all social media and then they all have to follow the same guidelines and then if they don't then you can force them to sell but to just target tiktok seems a little strange because you know it, it seems more it's more of like a it seems more political than it does definitely you know, because there's an actual you know threat uh you know and obviously there's these growing tensions with you know the u.s and china and and uh the, you know that it, and it, it is the perfect bastion of like this is a chinese company that is taking over here and so we're gonna you know put them in their place and so yeah it's like create a set of regulations that everybody can follow and then force them to do it otherwise it just it, it feels political and it feels like okay if you really cared about privacy um and you really cared about information not you know an influence peddling from other countries i feel like there were other things you would do but this was kind of like the easy you know political thing where you can kind of score some points all right, so um, on to our next. Uh, we got two more things. We have two trailers we're going to watch, and then um, we'll get over to talking a little bit about Shogun. So, um, Justin, as you know, um, I'm a massive fan of The Crow, um, both the the comic when, and when, I really when we used to uh, when, when we used to um, to to wrestle each other, we had our like pseudo pro wrestling league in junior <laughs> high school. Ryan's uh, Ryan was a face, and he was Raven. He chose the next <laughs> right, best before the actual Raven, right? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. He chose the next uh, best the thing. You yeah. should sue, but you should sue. Yeah, I was right. the original Raven. <laughs> yeah, no. So, um, <laughs> but anyway, so so the Crow is one of my favorite favorite comic books. Uh, you know, I love the movie. Um, you know, obviously tragic uh, in its own way. And I just we watched it um a few weeks ago, and it holds up. It's still a fantastic movie. Yeah, um, it's and you know, kind of like you realize like how how big of a loss I guess you know Brandon Lee was because I think he was somebody who was headed for superstardom. He was he was so good in that such a good actor and you know good with action so you know it was, it's sad and and i think there have been you know there were a couple sequels over the years and in the last 10 years i want to say there have been several attempts to reboot it um you know with various actors attached to it and they finally you know finally have one with with bill skarsgård of it fame um uh, attached as uh, playing the the role of eric draven so uh when i saw that the trailer came out i decided i'm gonna wait 
I'm going to watch it live because it's a really, it's a movie and, and, and uh, property that's dear to my heart and uh, we'll, we'll decide what it's like. So, um, so we're going to all watch this. Justin, have you seen the trailer? No, I'm looking forward nope, to okay. it. Okay. I know you have Cynic. So uh, let's watch the trailer and then we will, uh, we'll discuss. All right. What's the first thing you liked about me? I thought that you were quite brilliant and broken. You feel like my person? <laughs> you feel like my person. What's the worst thing you've ever done? I saw things. I shouldn't have seen any of them. Joey! Joey! Please don't do this! When someone dies, a crow carries their soul to the land of the dead. But sometimes something so bad happens that the soul cannot rest. Until you put the wrong things right. You were given the power of a god. But you're running out of time to save her. I'm gonna kill them. Every single one of them. I killed you. Yeah, you did. We have a problem. He came for us. First impulse. Anger. It's not anger. It's love. What you become? You know that love promises only pain. You have no idea what hell awaits you. No, I do. How many people have you loved? I'll never be alone. Well, I can say that I really <laughs> hope that he avenges the death of his girlfriend, Harley Quinn, and he may kill the Suicide <laughs> Squad this time. Yeah, I, I, so like I saw some of the, the memes about um about it kind of looking like the uh, Jared Leto Joker, and yeah, he kind of does. Um, and oh, yeah, that's not what I wanted out of this movie if they were going to redo it. Could um, we at least do the makeup? Yeah, like, uh, I don't know. I mean, looks not so like you know the. I think what I and I'm not somebody like I, you know I, I'm not somebody who's like a big oh the books were better or whatever. I think you know in this case like the 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 movie the original Crow movie um, was was a, quite a bit different from from the story in in the in the book in the comic and, and in, in ways that I think were good and it was and it was good in its own way. So when they announced that there was going to be a movie, and I'd be interested to see if um, the original, if the writer of the comic was involved in this at all. Because I think when when they when I heard they were writing or com they were rebooting the movie, my one thought was, okay, if they make a movie that like I don't need a new Crow movie, but if they make one that's maybe a little bit closer to the book, that might be interesting, right? Because I don't I don't need to re, re you know I need, don't need you to redo the movie, but if you're going to redo it, let, let's make it a little bit closer to the book. That might be interesting. There's some interesting things in the book that that might work. And I think that the one thing with Bill Skarsgård is he's got a physicality to him that could be interest an interesting kind of 
interpretation of of James Obar's um art. So in that way, for me, it was like, okay, that might be interesting, but this is not it. Like this looks like a you know very you know like stylized kind of all in in the wrong way. You know, the violence <laughs> it, it looks interesting, I guess, but kind of like it's like it's more like look at this cool way we you know look at this cool way we killed somebody more than like you know something that's just guttural and violent like this you know if you ever re- read or hear the story of of why he wrote this or how he came up with it it's like pure revenge fantasy and it's purely you know just from it comes from a place of like utter pain and despair and this movie's not it, it, it exactly like you said it, it feels like you know you, you decided to make it look like jared leto's joker like a stylized like yeah. kind of cool looking like no that's not it like this is somebody in, in extreme pain and suffering and that's not what i got from this trailer at all it feels like they're gonna have a villain problem too because the villains look yeah. way too fucking normal yeah it, you know, it's like somebody's school teacher and somebody's principal. Exactly. Yeah, you're, you're totally right. Like, it looks it's like, like okay, they're going you know, the corporate but, route for the villain. Yeah, no, and, and like the villains in, in again, in the original movie, they all had a unique look. They looked, I mean, they looked like people that were on the street, like every single one of them. Um, and I, I'm forgetting the, the actor that plays the, the, the main villain, but he's so good. Um, and uh, like this, yeah, this, I don't know, I'm not excited. Like, this is not, I don't even know that I'm going to want to go see this thing because it just does uh, not what i was well, look, not what you, i was can, wanting out of it. you can never tell right like some so it could wind up being it could wind up being better than it looks yeah. to me i'm i'm in the same boat it looks like let's do this very sexy and stylized yeah. right and sort of lose yeah. the the pain now look the original crow was sexy too but not like let's flaunt it. I feel this is like yeah. let's make it, you know let let's do everything yeah you know, like real stylized, real yeah. slick, right? Um, and just you know yeah. was that, is that was that Ozzy Osbourne? Is that an Ozzy yes, Osbourne song? Right. It's it's like, out, I'm pretty sure it was right. It right? sounded yeah, it's like, like yeah. The day you know, uh, the, the 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 day of hell has come when Ozzy Osbourne sounds like a cross between Imagine Dragons and Drake. So, like, <laughs> well, the question is: is it we, actually a song, there, or, or was it? Is he? Is it like actually, a you know weird remix of something? Because that's what I mean. A lot of these trailers, what they do is they'll take a song, remix it to fit the. That's the other thing. Is like it just feels like a movie trailer. It's like uh, it's just yeah, too. Yeah, stu- I don't know. Okay. Like just being it, funny, but. It, yeah. One of the things I know. loved about the original yeah. was it felt like you're watching a comic book. Yeah. It, it was like yes, a comic book was... come to life. Yes. And this does not feel Wait, like it's that. Not it. No, no, it doesn't look like it. So, I mean, that's the thing is like the, the hope for me was like, okay, we're going to see something that maybe is even more like that. Like, let's give it like, give us a story that from the book that's just very much like, it's just all just pain, right? Anguish and physicality and like, cool. I'm, I'm, I'm here for that. This, uh, um, you know, not so much. So, yeah, I mean, we'll, like, we'll see. It's, like, yeah. it's good in its own way, but yeah, it, it looks like a very slick, very well-produced sort of, you know, sexy modern take on things well, that may not hold true to the, uh, you know, to, to the original I, idea. But Let's put it this way. I don't need my Crow movie to be, uh, you know, trying to be John Wick. And that's kind of the feeling I also got watching that trailer. It's like, is this, is this the crow or is this trying to be John Wick? Right. Yeah. Cause like that's something stylized, you know, looks great, you know, shot awesome, which, okay. Yeah. It could be shot. Well, whatever, you know, but sure. you know, ultra violent, creative violence. Like that's not what I really need out of this. Right. And then, so, you know, also and then mentioning, you know, you mentioned the, um, the music and like, again, you know, movie with one of the best soundtracks. Of all time, like ever, you know, just such an amazing soundtrack. An episode we got to do one day is like some of the, which I I feel like the the crow will make all of our top five lists because it's just such a such an amazing soundtrack, um, and uses the music in the movie so well too. But but yeah, okay, so yeah, we'll we'll see. You know, it's one of those like if it gets, I I feel like right now watching it, like as big of a fan as as I am, like this is something where I'd have to it'd have to get really good reviews for me to want to go watch it because otherwise I just feel like if, if this gets mediocre reviews, then there's no part of me that wants to see it. But yeah, like you said, Cynic, he doesn't even have the makeup. Why don't I want to watch this thing? <laughs> so, all right. Um, all right, so we'll watch one more thing. Um, so, Cynic, you brought you mentioned the Civil War trailer. I have not seen this yet. So, um, we're going to check this out, too. All right. America. People. Oh, sorry. Citizens of America. People. It's a Florida Alliance. 
and the Western forces of Texas and California will be welcomed back to these United States as soon as their illegal secessionist government is deposed. You don't know what side they're fighting for. Someone's trying to kill us. We are trying to kill them. Oh, wow. And that's that's coming up soon. Yeah. Talk about that, the perfect movie at the perfect time. I yeah. just want to know how badly did fucking Washington mess up for California and Texas to succeed together? <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> like, they can't get on the same page about anything. So what did they do over there? And yeah, they're like, wow. fuck Dick Offerman, we're out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that, no, that, that's a good trailer. Um, or you say that's funny. Yeah, yes. California and Texas together. So to me, that looks like they're uh, they're trying to stay away from anything uh, w- from the trailer from that looks like they're trying to not be too political in the in, from what's going on now. Make it about a different uh, world. So yeah. that's what it seems like they're trying to do this without being making too much of a, of a modern political statement. But who knows? Smart maybe, to release maybe it there before is the election. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> but no, that, that, look, yeah, that looks good. Interesting timing. A, yeah, A24. So they're, and, you know, A24 is, is generally, you know, they you know, put out good movies. Uh, yeah, Nick Offerman's great. Um, and anything he's in. So, yeah, that's something I'll definitely want to go see. Um, and that's coming out soon. So maybe something that we can add, we'll add to our, uh, add to the schedule um, to review. I'll tell you what, too. Talk about an actress that's really coming to her prime. Kristen Dunst. Yeah. It, it seems like ever since she did Fargo, yeah. everything she does, everything she shows up in is fucking fantastic. And yeah. she's in this, too, which makes me excited. So th- yes. this is the sense that I'm getting. And, and, and after we watch it, we can see that I, I have wondering the the third this just smells like a a a third act movie that just degenerates into nothingness Hmm. like that's the the sense that i'm getting that like it starts off good it has a good premise in the third act it falls apart that's would be the concern looking at it which a lot of movies like this that are trying to try to bite off this ginormous you know, idea like how is it gonna re- resolve? Is it just going to um, degrade itself into just a lot of violence and just a lot of shooting and, and killing and bombing and whatever it is, or, or is there going to be a uh, like an intelligent resolution where it, it 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 doesn't just fall apart and you know degenerate into you know just a, a bloodbath? So. Well, we'll we will we'll find out in a couple of weeks then. But but no, I don't. I'm hopeful. I think they, you know, like I said, I think as a, as a you know, I think a twenty four movies tend to be a step above that. Um, and so I'm hoping that if you do get that crazy third act, which I'm sure you will get in some of that, that there it makes sense and that it's not just like you know just doesn't devolve into insanity for the sake of it. So um, let's get to our so main thing, which I, I don't think we're going to spend a ton of time. Um, talking about it but um we've all caught up with we've all watched some level of shogun so i think cynic and i both watched one episode justin you've watched two and um so if you haven't watched uh shogun yet it 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 basically is kind of a it's hard to describe but it's basically it's like 17th century like feudal japan it's kind of a semi-historical drama um there, there are no expenses spared. I will say, uh, as far as like costumes and the, and the set design and uh, whatever effects, like it, it looks amazing. But basically, you have this kind of, at least from what we've got in the first episode, is you have this kind of power struggle within the Council of Regents, 
And um, when at the same time, this, a European ship kind of washes ashore. And, you know, you have these characters that are kind of like in the middle of, again, you have these people that are in the middle of a power struggle when the Europeans show up. And I, I'm not quite sure where the show is going to go at this point. Um, and we'll get into a little bit about what our, what our thoughts are and as far as where it'll go after this first episode. But on the my first question, uh, Cynic, for you, did, it, did, did, it, did you get heavy Game of Thrones vibes like as soon as, as, soon as it started, basically? Yeah, I mean, they did uh, move the story around like Game of Thrones where we got to see, you know, different characters in different uh, uh, different areas. And, uh, you know, uh, it was a lot of getting to know you in the first episode, figuring out who's who, because when we when you whenever you get into these martial art type uh, shows, um, you have a hard time picking up who's who. So I think they did a good job so kind of uh, flushing yeah. out everybody's character to start. Yeah. Yeah, it definitely seemed like that. What are, what are your thoughts, Justin? Well, so, well, first off, I, I want to mention that it, 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 it's, it's based off a novel, right? From 1975. Um, guy's yeah. name is James Clavel, right? And, the, and this wasn't the first adaptation of it. There was a series, yeah. I believe, before, right? So first it was the novel. Um, and then I think there was a series. It's funny. I, I started watching it with my uh, with my girlfriend. She's like, "Yeah, I, I know the story. I read the novel, and I saw the the first take of it. So I'm watching it for the third time. And they actually are staying pretty true. I never read the novel, but they're staying pretty true to the story, which I think is is cool. Um, yeah, it's nice that they're doing that. Um, yeah, based on what Cynic said, um, are we are we doing are, are we going to do any rating? Like, I mean, you can we'll just... talk about kind of if we're going to recommend it or not, but yeah. Okay. To me that, um, that I thought, I, I thought they did a good job, not a great job of the characters because for an American audience, there are a lot of Japanese characters and, um, I, I don't love to watch it dubbed, although the dubbing has gotten so much better in recent years. The oh, you're watching it dubbed? Acting. No, I'm not. I don't, I okay, prefer yeah. not to, yeah. although for certain things I will, like if it's a comedy, I'm going to watch it, yeah. might, might watch it dubbed. But for something like this, I want to see the real acting, yeah. right? So you have it's 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 beautifully shot. Definitely the way just the 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 way it's shot and and you know the way they introduce the characters and everything in the scenery. Very you could t very Game of Thrones influenced. You could just, like almost from the first <laughs> from the first shot, you could say you can tell they're 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 coming from that that school. Um, but yeah, I thought they did a good job of introducing the characters, not a great job because it's in it's subtitled. So you're listening carefully. So you have a lot of, uh, Japanese characters and some European ones that look the same. It's hard, it's hard to, you know, based on the audio and everything that's going on, sometimes hard to discern the difference in, um, how they're, they're speaking. Um, it's darkly shot at the beginning, uh, and it's it's a lot of characters, so it is fairly easy to get confused with like, all right, who's who? What's going on? I'm lost. Did, did I? And, and you have that. The I don't know if you guys have ever had uh, uh, show anxiety where you're watching something and you constantly worry that you've missed something. Did I wait? Did I miss something? Am I? Who is this guy? Did I? You know, am I seeing this for the first time? Um, so there is a, a little element of that. I thought that Game of Thrones, for instance, was excellent in introducing characters, even though they did have, um, they were very good at differentiating characters that could potentially look alike. Um, this not as good, but it was solid. I think they did. It, it was probably a, a little harder, especially for an American audience that is, um, that would be reading the subtitles. I thought they did a good job of of introducing the characters and uh, differentiating them. And I will say that as it gets to the second episode, that it, it's much clearer. Like once they got past that, it is much, much easier to understand. So if there was any concern about the first episode and being a little confused with going on, once you get past that, it, it, it becomes much clearer and any sort, sort of show anxiety that you've missed something goes away and it's, it's much easier to, to follow what's going on. So I, I largely think um, I thought they did a good job. So I did definitely got I feel so I got the Game of Thrones vibe, but I also feel like some of that has to do with just like any historical fiction that is you know that's going to have large set pieces and a lot of characters now is always going to be 
um compared to game of thrones right like you if they're if, when they reboot lord of the rings we're going to compare it to game of thrones even though game of thrones is compared to lord of the ring you know and, and, and it all becomes a cycle so i do feel like maybe some of the comparisons are a little unwarranted because you know yes it is epic and they're massive set pieces but it shouldn't be relegated to like this is another game you know this, you know if you like game of thrones you'll like this because i don't necessarily think it's the same i don't know whether it's 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 it's, it's you know, the thematically the same and and um the that it moves, though and the characters yeah. and the way the so, characters interact I, yeah, that's right because it's like all of a sudden so. oh wait there's five regents or whatever they call them and they're all fight yeah, yeah, you know they're yeah. vying for you know a throne huh this sounds familiar so, so there, but then again this part. came first exactly right so so yeah um so so i i do get those comparisons but i think i whether game or not you like game of thrones i wouldn't let this decide your, your, your choice i do think it does look great i think it you know there's that shot um in the very beginning where the uh there's a, the ship is kind of arriving um it just it, it was beautiful right yeah, it's like it just it, it's it's really like almost overexposed it's kind of it, you know fog and then you just see this yeah, giant ship come out and no it, it was just it's beautifully shot and just the costumes are great i you know there are costumes a lot of characters in it i do think they did a good job because you know i think part of it is like okay we know there's a lot of characters and so when you're setting up a lot we we kind of need to it's like it, it, it's kind of like you, you have your broad view of what's going on and we just need to very slowly like things become clear right it kind of starts all nebulous and we're just okay let's some, like a little spot of like color and a little spot of clarity and then everything becomes clear over time so i think they did a good job of at least saying okay you have the one guy the one character who is kind of against everybody right now like as with the one japanese guy against everybody and then there's our white guy that we're going to follow and you learn very early on who's the you know who, who's the white guy that we're going to be following throughout the throughout the show right yeah. and uh and and that gives us at least some reference right like some frame of reference for who the characters are and then we, we we start to know who a little bit more like who the important characters are. So I think they do, a, to me, they did a good job in that first episode of at least um, giving me a frame of reference for like, who do I need to be following and need to know who this person is. Um, and it is a challenge, like watching anything, you know, it, it's, it's dubbed. I mean, not it's, um, you know, subtitles. <laughs> There's quite a bit of English in it as well. Um, the original author is, Amer uh, uh, or uh, it was, I forget if they're American or English, but it's written in English. So it's not, it's a Westerner who did, who wrote the original um, novel. Um, but, uh, and it is a bit of a challenge because one of those, you, you, you both, you have to give the kind of attention you had to give a show like Game of Thrones because of the amount of characters and the plotting and, and the kind of storylines that are going on at once. And you also have to pay even more attention because you have to read everything. And so then it's almost something that requires like a second viewing to make sure you're, you're catching yep. everything the because they're just, there's so much, um, you know, going on in it. But uh, Justin, what did you th what do you think of the story so far? It does like did or is it something that that's holding you? Or are you ex is it, is it a storyline that you're really excited about, or is it something that like are you yeah, more you just know, in for it? I because am, of, I'm I'm enjoying it. I'm I'm planning on watching it. Um, I, I I like everything from the broad story of of what's happening. And once you get towards the end of episode two, it becomes a much it becomes a somewhat simpler plot line. And I have a feeling it's going to get a lot. It's going to expand. Well, I know it will. Um, and, um, but yeah, it, uh, the, the, the story is holding, um, and I'm, a, I like the, um, the details as well, like, um, the, the discussion of some of the, uh, of the customs, it doesn't hit you over the head with it, but it's there, like the way that, um, uh, people would interact based on their status, based on their gender, based on, uh, their religion, uh, certain things like that. I thought it was interesting. I had suggested, to you guys that um, we should draw straws to see who um, commits seppuku um, <laughs> live on the podcast because we know it would go viral, right? If that actually happened, right? <laughs> so, <Okay>. um, <laughs> um, well, the, the seppuku so, yeah, the was details... a big theme. So now, what what are your thoughts? Uh, without giving away what happens, uh, what are your thoughts on how they weaved in <laughs> that idea of kind of you know almost like ritual? like sacrifice um you know uh, into the uh into the show well it's it, you know it 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 makes sense the, <clears throat> the concept of honor right because if you think about it in if you are a um if if you're you know in in a fiefdom if you're a soldier if you are uh, loyal to someone what's to keep you from just going and doing what you want to do what's best for you you know, but the the concept of 
honor and loyalty. And when that is so ingrained, it forces you to stay loyal to your lord or whoever you work for. And right, so I think that's it, it's a, it's an important theme because there's always the thought, well, why the hell? And they even discuss it. They even talk about, well, you know, that one point was like, well, did you, you know, you basically, did you bet on the right horse here? Um, and the guy was like, well, I thought about that, you know, as well. So it's, I'm, I'm glad that they mentioned that as well. But yeah, I did find that the, the, the concept of, uh, you know, of the honor and loyalty and how how important it is and how big it is in that um, uh, in, in in that society, you know, it, it plays a role. It's a constant theme throughout in in one way or another. Uh, Cindy, did you run into any issues with the uh, with with the uh, subtitles or just having to kind of keep keep uh, track with that while also trying to pay attention to all the characters and story? I mean, there was a lot going on. The one thing that I did like about Game of Thrones is they did uh they went above and beyond to kind of distinguish the different houses and different groups, you know, whether it be with their flags or their symbols or their colors and they didn't really do that here. Like the the costumes were very very similar. I mean, some of the haircuts were were uniform. Some of the <laughs> uniforms were all slightly different. But I mean, in order for me to learn them, I think it would have probably taken a second viewing of the first episode and a lot more. So yeah, uh, keeping track of the subtitles and trying to keep track of the story and all the elements moving around was a little difficult. But I mean, you know, you're going to run into that. Uh, I was telling you before we recorded, I generally have subtitles on anyway, but I don't like them. I don't like the, to rely on them to tell me the story. Like I, I prefer to if I miss something or there's a loud scene or a quiet scene, I'll be able to pick up the subtleties that you know my hearing won't allow. So yeah, I, I mean, uh, I could have done without them. Would, no, would you if you were to continue, which we'll, we'll get to that question. But would you do it dubbed, or will you? Would you? Do you feel like you kind of need the subtitles in order to really get the performance? You know, I didn't know until you guys said something that dubbing was even uh, a possibility. <laughs> Yeah. So maybe I go back and try the first episode dubbed and kind of feel my way through and and see whether I like it better one way or the other. Yeah, it's it, it's a tough one because I think I I find I do find that like when I watch, you know I I I I'm fine watching shows dubbed. Like I've watched several shows over the last you know couple of years that that were in whatever language and dubbed. Uh, but I feel like something like this, I almost, I almost feel like I have to watch it. Like the performances, I think, are so important in this. Um, that I almost feel like I'd be doing a disservice to watch it dubbed, but I can understand the you know the wanting to just because there's so it, there's just a lot to keep track of um, with it, and it seems like they're hitting you with it because again when we going back you know going back to the Game of Thrones comparison, the other thing that happens is early on like for the you know first episode you you've got it's you know House Stark and House Baratheon right like it's just that like you're not dealing with um a a lot of you know you're not dealing with so many groups that you have to parse, you, you know, who's who and who belong, you know, who's where, and then you're introduced to people over time. This as kind of like a limited series based on a massive book, like you're getting hit with a lot of stuff very quickly. And so it, it, I think it makes it that much harder to keep track because you know, they're, they're, they don't have the time to do a lot of the things that they were able to do in, in like Game of Thrones to differentiate. So we're not going to really, not necessarily do a rating because we're only a couple episodes in, um, and I don't know that it's, it's not something we're going to be doing every week. Uh, maybe we'll revisit it when the season's over or when the series is over. But um, I guess what we'll talk about is, uh, you know, maybe if you give Cynic, I'll go to you first. It, are you going to continue watching it, and would you recommend it? Because those might be two different answers. So maybe give me your like like broad view thoughts so far after one episode, and will you continue, and would you recommend it? Based off of what's out right now, and there's a very limited amount of contact as far as TV, yeah, I'll probably continue on with the story. I mean, there were parts of the first episode that really grabbed me, and I was really interested, and there was parts where I, I checked to see how much time was left. Like, okay, is this almost over? Oh, no, there's 20 minutes left. So, I mean, the uh, I believe the premiere episode is 10 minutes longer than most of the other ones, but uh, yeah, it did seem to drag a bit in the third act, so... Yeah, I think I'll continue watching it, but a lot of that has to do with the the. There's very limited stuff on TV right now. How about you, Justin? Well, very limited for for you guys who who seem to be, you know be able to consume a lot, and I'm just like, how the hell do you have all this time? Um, I, I was I was definitely into it. Uh, I will be continuing to watch it, and um, I just wanted to mention one thing as the resident musician. I think the music to the show is excellent. 
Um, it it's it doesn't hit you over the head overly, you know, trying to be Japanese or too stylized. It's it's subtle and it's really well written. And I'm re- and I was just looking here. The the music is written by Atticus Ross and his brother Leopold Ross oh. and collaborator um, collaborated with uh, Nick Chuba. I, I guess is is how you pronounce his name. Um, and it says here that they basically worked for two years to write four hours of music wow so so it it goes to show that there was a lot of attention to detail in all aspects of the show um I'll, I'll be watching it i enjoyed it so definitely we'll be watching it moving forward and it's not a i don't think it's it's not going to be a, a six um you know season series yeah. i think it's going to be a mini series it'll it, it's not going to be too much investment so I'm not going into the same. Oh, I have to watch, you know, you know, six years worth of, um, you know, TV to to get through it. So yeah, I'm I'm definitely going to yeah. be watching it moving forward. Yeah, I tend to agree with you. I think that's a great point. I think it's I I, I like the first episode a lot. I you know I don't know that I loved it. I don't know that it grabbed me and hooked me in to like you know you know the way that like the first episode of Game of Thrones did. But um, I I still think it was a very good you know hour and ten minutes of TV. Uh, they did a good, there was enough intrigue to get me interested, enough happened, because I think the other challenge was like, at first it felt like it was like, just kind of meandering along, like I wasn't sure what the story was, and then it's like, okay, there's a story here, oh, interesting, you know, some interesting and heavy things happen in the episode, and so enough goes on for me to think, okay, I, I want to give this a shot and watch it. Um, the challenge is more finding the time, you know, the the un you know, unencumbered time to sit and really give it the yeah, attention it deserves. And that might be the challenge for me watching it more than anything. Because there are a lot of there are a lot of things that are easy to just put on and watch. This you really need to be able to put everything away and watch it. So I think that would be the challenge. I would definitely recommend it. And also like you said, I, it's not a massive commitment. I think it's it's a miniseries and then it's done. So it's not like I, you know, by by agreeing to watch this, I'm committing to a show that like, you know, they're they're planning on seven seasons and and who knows where it's going to go. So, yeah, I would definitely say I'm going to I'm going to continue to watch it and you know, as long as you're okay with the subtitles, um, you know, I would I would definitely recommend it. So that's my uh my my thought right now and and like I said when the season ends, maybe we'll revisit it. And just give it a quick, like, what what our actual reviews and ratings are for it. Just a quick teaser for next week. uh, The House of Dragons trailers dropped. They have dueling black and green uh, uh, trailers. We got to talk about that next week. Okay, yeah, yeah, we'll do that next week. Yeah, definitely. They did a great job. Yeah, I got to, I did not, I saw that it, I saw that it dropped. And I like I, it was between that and taking a nap. So, um, but uh, (laughs) I'm actually. (laughs) um, Nap always wins out. Yeah, yeah, definitely make sure you watch them both because yeah. they're from opposite ends of the spectrum. Oh, really? Okay. Yeah, no. So we'll def- def- we'll definitely check that out and uh, and add that to the list uh, or add that to the uh, oh, so something else. We talk about I'm excited about that. That that is something that we will do. Uh, Justin, you watched the first season of House of the Dragon, right? No, no. you didn't. Oh, well, you, your homework is going to be catch up because that's something we're going to be talking about. Ne- um, okay. In uh, you know when it comes out, because that was a like I loved House of the Dragon. I thought you know it was, I was concerned that, that you know you could follow up Game of Thrones, but um, it, you know it was fantastic. Um, so yeah, we'll, we'll we'll make sure that you're you're caught up by the time uh, that comes out because that that'll be in June. June's going to be a big month. I think uh, The Boys comes back in June um you know some movies coming out so so we've got an exciting uh summer coming up but yeah no, so yeah next week next week will also be a packed episode we're gonna try to talk about some x-men um we've got the roadhouse movie and maybe the three body problem if i can get you guys to watch it so uh so some fun stuff next week but uh, as as always uh, a fun time and it always the time flies like we always this episode is way longer than I, I i anticipate but um but it's always fun talking to you guys and uh, we always have, have a good chat so um as usual all of our stuff is at portablehole and you can find all of our, all of our socials are at portable underscore hole so justin until next time watch out for the hole 